1 Kings 14 is a continued story of woe and tragedy for divided Israel. It reads as if Jeroboam and Rehoboam are competing for the worst kings ever or the most wicked awards. Chapter 14 encapsulates sin and judgment, but also with sin and judgment, we always seem to find the Lord's grace. Isn't our God amazing? You see, Jeroboam, king of the northern kingdom, sends his wife to receive good news from the prophet Ahijah. Remember Ahijah? He was the one that delivered news to Jerry that he would become the king of the north in the first place. Well, he, he sends for news concerning his dying son. But this time, in place of good news, instead, he receives nothing but warning and judgment. Warning and judgment because of his wickedness, he would lose his son and lose his grip on the northern kingdom. Later on in the chapter, we're told that judgment will also come to Rehoboam. Verse 22 tells us that Judah did evil in the sight of the Lord, and their sins, which they committed, more than all of their fathers had done. So during his fifth year, Rehoboam reigning in the southern kingdom of Israel will likewise experience judgment from God when the Lord allows Egypt along with other peoples to come into Jerusalem where we're told they took away the treasures from the house of the Lord and treasures of the king's house. They took away everything, also all of the gold shields which Solomon had made. Okay, Pastor Randy. So we see the judgment and the woe that came about Judah and the northern kingdom. Where is God's grace in this, you might ask? You see, the Lord chastises those he loves because he loved his people dearly. He would not allow them to stay on their path of wickedness and destruction. This is grace. That the Lord would warn Jeroboam by the mouth of Ahijah, this is grace. That the Lord would spare the city of Jerusalem and only take its riches. This is grace. The problem comes when we're warned by the Lord. We're warned of our wickedness and even chastised for it, and yet we do not learn. We do not repent and turn to the Lord. This is a tragedy and a woe that we in the church often experience as well. But it doesn't have to be this way. First John tells us that if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we'll have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us of all sin. And if we have blown it, we can run to God's throne where we find grace in our time of need. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I can't help but wonder, what if Jeroboam and Rehoboam had repented? Would God's grace have abounded all the more? Of course it would have. May we ourselves receive the Lord's warning concerning walking in wickedness and turn. And may we not mistake God's grace and patience as a license to sin. You are greatly loved, so go and greatly love.